Thanks so. a lot. Okay. Should, should I wait for that? Is? No, no. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Okay. He's, he's not going to be in the room. Oh, I see. I see. I see. So, got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Good. I mean, uh, thanks for inviting me here. Uh, I'm really happy to be in Chicago. It's my second time in Chicago. I uh, was here for four days last time. Uh, here will be only a quick stop. But during this quick stop, I really, really would like to tell you a few things on uh, uh, a fairly recent way of effectivizing the theory of Borel equivalence fission. So this is a, a crucial branch of modern Mosquitoza theory. I will tell you a little bit more about that. And uh, uh, basically, we will focus on, uh, it's a theory about, I mean, not surprisingly, the complexity of equivalent solutions, right? Which has been a major topic of research in different area of logics. And in particular, we will consider uh, two different approaches one may have. So one which is uh, uh, more focused on the complexity of equivalent solution in some uncountable domains, perhaps keep it with some nice topology, and the other one uh, which are just equivalent solution on omega, right? So these two research lines were uh, conducted quite independently for quite some time. But in recent times, there has been some interaction interplay and really a try, uh, a really some attempt to providing a, a sort of uh, effective analog of the classic theory of relative insulation. And it is exactly what I would like to focus on. Everything, uh, pretty everything I would like to say today, it's joint work with Uri Anders, which is there. I'm not entirely sure that this is the 29th edition, is it? You don't know? Yeah. Okay, okay, good. So, so as I told you, quite briefly in the opening, I will tell you something about Borel and computable reductions, how they behave. Uh, you will see that computable reduction, it is a very natural effectivization of the Borel one, but going from, let's say, counter space to Omega, right? And then I will tell you how this notion combined, right? And here we will build on, uh, really nice paper by Koski, Emkins, and Russell Miller, uh, in which they propose to consider uh, effectivization of a real equivalent solution by considering their restriction to the C cells, right? And so I will try for each of these main topics that come from the theory of real equivalent solution to discuss uh, how things behave when we try to effectivize those, right? So we'll say a few things about dichotomies, uh, really some really basic things as a warm up, and then I will I will try to concentrate on both these main notions. So how we effectivize this idea of orbit equivalent solutions, a crucial notion from the Borel theory, and how we deal with isomorphism relations. Okay. Okay. So let's start really basic. A reduction of an equivalent solution E, which is defined on some space X, to another equivalent solution F, which is defined on Y. It just an equivalence class, it is it just a reduction, it's just a function from x to y, which induce a mapping, an injective mapping of the E classes to the F classes, right? So F itself, it is not required to be injective at all, right? But it just provides you a map which sends different E classes to different F classes, right? Easy as that, right? Now, the point is, uh, of course, I mean, this reduction is not particularly informative is you, if you let any reduction do the job, right? If you are too liberal in the notion of reduction, then instead of C, you can always prove that as long as the E classes are no more than the F classes, E would reduce to F, right? So you definitely would like to put some constraint on F, right? In order to grasp the idea that uh, E is, it is not supposed to be more complicated than F, right? So you would like to put some definitional or algorithmic requirements to the space and to the functions involved in this reduction. And in the literature, you have two main options. So the first one, it is Borel reducibility. So you assume that X and Y are Polish spaces and F is Borel. And, and then you have a notion of Borel reducibility. And of course, I mean, we would like also to think of the corresponding notion of degrees, right? So you would have two things being bioreducible and we would like to use this notation. So Borel reducibility, let me go really quickly on that historically, was introduced in, independently, but take this extreme case of serendipity with exact the same notation and terminology in two papers. 
So first of all, by Harvey Friedman and Stanley, with the goal of evaluating the complexity of isomorphism relation. I hope I will have time in the last part of the talk to actually show you why Borel reduction proved to be a decisive tool for comparing the complexity of isomorphism relations of countable structures. And at exactly the same time, by Harrington, Kekris, and Lugo, with the goal of extending the so-called Glee methods dichotomy, I will tell you what this is about, to arbitrary Borel equivalent solutions. So they introduced this notion of Borel reducibility to classifying equivalent solution of polished faces. And since then, I mean, if you wish, it's a, it's a fairly recent notion, right? I mean, it's 30 something, right? Like I am, right? But contrary to myself, I mean, Borel reduction had, had developed in a really marvelous way, right? Uh, proving a lot of deep interaction with many other things, uh, okay, which I didn't. Uh, Borel reduction had been explored and what is interesting about those is that, that it, it has a lot, of, a lot of connections with different areas of mathematics. And in particular, today, we will say something about connections with group theory, right? Okay. Now, on the other hand, computable reducibility, it is the main tool for classifying equivalent solutions on omega, right? So here, X and Y are just a set of natural numbers, and we require F to be a computable function, right? So, of course, we have a notion of the, the, uh, computable by reducibility, and from that, the notion of degrees, right? And here, the history is way more intricated. So, first of all, it has been introduced in the 70s. So, let me actually see. Okay, good. It has been introduced in the 70s. So, if you wish, even before Borel reducibility, it has been examined by, say, Herschel in the East, Lackland in the West, and a lot of leading logicians. And yet, I mean, it was forgotten and rediscovered multiple times, right? And of course, I mean, if you think about that, it's, it's a very natural notion, right? It's, would be, it would be reasonable that this appears a number of times. Okay, so um, it found a number of publications. I mean, we won't consider basically none of them, but just to briefly mention it, uh, it is very much connected with theory of numbering. It has application on the complexity in the metamathematics of first order arithmetic uh, for computable structure theory, combinatorial algebra for examining the complexity of more problems uh, and so forth. Right. But all just recently, a number of people, myself included, uh, started studying uh, the abstract uh, theory of computable reducibility. Right. Well, let's move to the math. So let's start extremely simple. The simplest Borel equivalent solution you can think of are the identities. Okay. So, and it's immediate to see that, in fact, I mean, the identity of the natural numbers it is Borel below the identity on counter space. Okay. Now, uh, but in fact, I mean, you could say way more, right? So there's a classic result that would tell you that the identity of counter space is the least equivalent solution up to the Borel reducibility uh, of all Borel equivalent solution. In fact, it reduces to an even any co-analytic equivalent solution. So as long as the equivalent solution has uncountably many classes, you are always able to reduce the identity of counter space to right? And that's the content of the famous Silver's dichotomy, right? If you pick any E being even conolytic, if you wish, then exactly, it, it must be the case that one of the two holds, right? Which of course means that in the Borel hierarchy, this guy, the identity on counter space, is just a successor in terms of complexity of the identity on omega, okay? So then the natural question it is, okay, can it be the case that there is a successor to also this guy, right? And a priori, you would imagine that this is not the case, right? I mean, this is really, of course, that's a natural candidate for a successor of the identity of omega, right? But it seems that beyond the identity of counter space, you won't have such a natural potential candidate for a successor. But in fact, there is, right? And that's the content of the general agreement for dichotomy, right? So let's say that E0 is the relation of eventual agreement on counter space, right? So to real sorry, zero equivalent. If there is a B factor, which they are exactly the same, okay? You actually have that E0 is the successor of the identity on counter space in the Borel hierarchy, right? So whatever Borel equivalent solution you can think of, uh, it will be either below, right, the identity on counter space, which by the, by the way, these are called smooth equivalent solutions. So it will be either smooth or E0 will be Borel. Right? So the Borel hierarchy starts really simple, right, as a linear order, right, up to E0, and then it explodes, right? The landscape is much wider. Um, so, for instance, let me just briefly mention two things that we know in this direction. So, uh, no Borel equivalent solution beyond its series is a node, meaning it's comparable with any other Borel equivalent solution, 
right? So for an equivalent solution, which is strictly beyond its zero, you will find another one which is incomparable with it, okay? And also there are, let's say, infinite anti-chains. In fact, I mean, you can say, well, there is an embedding from the uh, subsets of natural numbers ordered by almost inclusion into the brain, right? So you have infinite chain, chains, infinite anti-chains, et cetera, okay? Yeah, so you cannot have a general dichotomies, right? So Silver's dichotomy and Glimmerfer's dichotomy were the only general ones you can have, but you have some sort of, let's say, local dichotomies. So uh, let me mention this one. Basically, whatever, I, I, here I'm really cherry picking, right? I'm selecting topics of which I really would like to discuss the effective issue, right? So it's very much biased, this selection. So let E1 be the relation of eventual agreement on sequences of reals. So now the underlying space is due to the omega, to the omega, right? Okay. And E1 is minimal above it, right? And in fact, I mean, you actually have this, let's say, localized dichotomy, right? Okay. Good. So we can now move to the computable setting, which is after all, I mean, settings we are work, we are, we are working on, we are computability theorists. And our goal it is to try to develop a sort of an effective counterpart to the world, right? Now, in some cases, uh, of course, so first of all, I mean, the main limitation, the first limitation you can think of, it is cardinality, right? So all equivalent solutions are supposed to be defined in all in our context for computability disability to work, right? And this is not an issue for the identity on omega, right? It's just there as it is. But what about equivalent solution that has that are not really defined in some uncountable domain, right? That have uncountably many classes. And here we follow the hint by Koski, Emkins, and Miller. And the idea it is to adapt these relations and basically all benchmark equivalent solutions from the Borel setting to the computable one by restricting them to the C sets. So basically considering C instances of these equivalent solutions, right? Now, of course, if you have an equivalent solution which is defined in the CSS, this automatically will give you an equivalent solution which is defined on omega, right? Just considering the indices of those, right? So if you have that E it is on the CSS, then immediately you have that two indices will be in the EC equivalent solution, if and only if you have the WE, EC equivalent to WI, right? Okay. So then, Let's see quickly a few translations. So if you have the identity on counter space, this would translate to what? Well, a quality of six sets, right? Easy as that. Okay. And if you have E0, CE, right? So the CE counterpart of this eventual agreement on counter space will be just, I mean, the equivalent solution which are put to uh, identify two indices if and only if their symmetric difference is fine. Right. Okay. For E1, well, E1 uh, to effectivize this is defined, uh, of course, by regarding, uh, uh, so by itself, as I said, I mean, space is a different one, right? I mean, it's uh, eventually going for sequences of reals, right? But it's easy to be encoded, right? You just regard a C set as a subset of omega times omega, right? And remember the notation for a column of a given C set, right? And then, I mean, two uh, numbers will be E1C equivalent, if and only if there are indices for C sets that uh, equate uh, on almost all columns, right? Okay, so everything is pretty simple so far, so I probably should speed up a little bit here, right? But, uh, but let me give you just, just one example, okay? This is even too much for a theorem, probably, just proposition, right? So basically, some of the information from the Borel theory, it would just transfer smoothly to the uh, computable side. And in fact, I mean, it simplifies a lot, right? So you can actually show that you have these strict reductions, right? So the reduction themselves really closely resemble to the Borel ones. Right, if you would like to reduce a quality C to E0C, you just amplify differences, right? Okay. For the non-reductions, well, obtaining non-reductions in the broad setting is really hard, right? I mean, you really have to develop a lot of techniques and this basically boils down to the fact that uh, Borel reductions, I mean, are uh, not very, very strong, not very refined, right? It's kind of a coarse notion. So, uh, but here, I mean, of course, you have that the relation, the, the reductions would be sensible to the complexity of the relations involved, right? So for here, it is just sufficient to calculate what is the proper complexity of the relation that you have it here, right? In order to obtain no reductions. So really simple, right? Okay. On the other hand, there are some of these analogies, right? 
So they proved that, in fact, uh, E0C turned out to be computably bioreducible with E1C, right? And this contrasts with the Borel team, right? If you remember, E1C, E1 was strictly about E0, okay? So it breaks with that, but in fact, I mean, a result that we would, I would use a number of times later, it is, in fact, that E0C, it is as complex as possible. Right, so it's going in a sense. I mean, it's breaking a lot with the intuition behind Lee Methods dichotomy that E zero was the successor of the identity. Right, so this guy over here, it is the, as complex as possible, meaning that is sigma three universal. Any sigma three equivalent solution is computably bioreducible to E zero C. Okay. Now there is no analog of silver dichotomy, um, and if you think about that, well. First of all, I mean, there, there are multiple ways to see that, right? But let's let's concentrate really the focus on equivalent solution, which correspond to, which are defined on the C sets, right? Okay. So one can hope, uh, right, that the quality C would be the least element, at least for those. I mean, however you define a quotient of the quality C, so however you define an equivalent solution on the C sets, right, you may hope that similar to the case of the Borel setting, a quality C would be the least element of this equivalent solution. This turned out not to be the case, right? So for instance, consider this equivalent solution, and these are both delta two equivalent solution. So these are, this is the one that uh, identified two indices if and only if, right? The corresponding C set have the same list element, right? And one can prove that it's fairly straightforward that uh, actually you have that these two guys are incomparable and they are both strictly below equality C, right? So you have a lot of things going on and appearing just below the identity, right? And this again, comes from contrast with Silver dichotomy, right? A number of other dichotomy fail, so fail as well. I will tell you more about that. I mentioned that, and um, let me, I, I can expand this point later, right? Now, I'll start getting worried about time, right? So I, I mentioned this result for a number of reasons, including the fact that it's emphasizing. So obtaining this result is very easy once you properly use the recursion, right? So basically what I would like to say here, it is that a crucial difference, a relation, the crucial difference between the Borel setting and the computable setting, it is that in the computable setting, your, the reductions are sensible to the complexity of the relations involved and you have the recursion theory. But a combination of these two facts already develop, provide a theory which is fairly different from the non-effective one. And again, I mean, I see by your faces, you are not excited, right? And of course you are not, right? Of course you are not. The failure of the economy is to, uh, to be expected, right? As I said, I mean, contrary to the, uh, to the Borel case, you actually have that the complexity of relations and classes matter here, right? So of course you can actually obtain plenty of no reductions. And by controlling fixed points given by the recursion theorem, you have a lot of room for the diagonalizing, right? So whatever I said so far, it's supposed to be, right? <laughs> Uh, predictable, right? And so let's move to something that perhaps is less predictable, right? Or even surprising, I would like to claim. Okay. Now, a fundamental subclass of Borel equivalent solution are what are called by the acronym CB, CBRs, CBRs, right? So countable Borel equivalent solutions. So these are the guy that have uh, each class is countable, right? Okay. So one example being uh, E0, for instance, right? Okay. Now, uh, this study, right, a reason for which the study has been incredibly developed on the Borel setting, it is that this is very much connected with the equivalent solution that are realized by Borel actions of countable groups, right? So if you have a group action, right, which is working on some standard Borel space, this immediately gave rise to an equivalent solution, right, which is called famously the orbit equivalent solution, right? So which two elements of the space are in the same class, if not if there is a group element which sends the first one to the second, right? And of course, this is an equivalent solution because, well, this is a group, right? So you have inverses and basically this, if you have this, you would also have the inverse and all of this will fit in one class. Okay, so quickly two examples. So the odometer map. So suppose you have a counter space here, you have the action of Z, which is just plus one mod two. Right, with right carry. Okay, so this produces an equivalent solution, right? So, for instance, I mean, if you really do plus two to the real one, 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 and eventually all zeros, right? What would it take? Zero, 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 one, and then eventually all zeros. 
right? So this equivalent solution is basically zero with the exception that it glues the class, it transform all ones to all zeros. And so it glues this to class, right? Okay. So one other example that, that, that is quite significant for this theory, it is the shift action, right? And it's easy to get if you focus on the case in which the group is Z, right? So for any single group, the shift action act on the space, which is the collection of group elements. So two to the Z is naturally interpreted as the collection of doubly infinite binary sequence, right? Infinity both direction and right and left, right? And then uh, you would identify two of such doubly infinite binary sequence, if and only if they, one is the shift of the other, right? Okay. So it turned out, uh, I will tell you that later. Okay. <laughs> now, why, why there is this, this connection? Well, it, it depends on the so called Feldman Moore theorem, which will tell you that the countable Borel equivalent solution are exactly the same of those that are realized by, uh, by Borel actions of countable groups, right? So for any possible CB here, there must be a countable group G, right? And a Borel action of G on the space such that E coincide with EG, right? Okay. So that then, of course, I mean, a lot of information about uh, how the countable Borel equivalent solution would behave, you can extract it from how the group action, the Borel actions of group would behave, right? So this provides a natural bridge, a really strong one from the Borel theory and the style. Okay. Now the proof for, uh, the, the proof by itself may sound mysterious. Notice that the emphasis it is in the Borel action, right? So it's the complexity of the action, right? If you don't care about the complexity of the action, you can certainly obtain that through even an action of Z, right? Again, by the action of choice, right? You just order the element in each equivalence class and you can generate this equivalent solution. So the mysterious part is that you can do that with Borel complexity, okay? And, but this follow, straightforwardly from the Lusine novikov uniformization that basically tells you from for every countable Borel equivalent solution, you can have a uniform Borel enumeration of all the uh, classes, right? Okay. So now the hierarchy of countable Borel equivalent solution is very much rich and complicated. There is a lot of literature about that. It's still to some extent poorly understood, right? And, but it has the top element, right? If you take the shift action generated by the free group on two elements, right? So which act, as I said, in the space of group elements, right? Set collections of group elements. This guy will be a universal uh, countable Borel equivalent solution, right? So you have a top element, right? You will also have a least element, right? Because of the Lemaphores and uh, or, or silver dichotomy already. And, but I mean, whatever it is in between, it's very rich and complicated, right? Okay, so how would you effectivize this, right? And the first reaction may be saying, well, of course you have no way of doing that, right? I mean, uh, isolating the subclass of countable Borel equivalent solution makes sense because you're putting some constraint on the cardinality of the classes, right? Which strictly does not make any sense in the context of equivalent solution in omega, right? So the classes, of course, all of them will be counted, right? So, but for effectivizing this, you, we all, of course, we, we're gonna rely on the, uh, these results that we have, right? So let's see be the collection of C sets. And here we'd like to understand those extensionally, right? So these are not by indices, but are just a, a subset of the number of numbers which turn out to be C, okay? Okay, now we have two notions, two ways, if you wish, of effectivizing the notion of countable Borel equivalent solution. Uh -huh. So the first one is corresponding to the Feldman Moore, right? And it's saying, okay, Feldman Moore tell us that any countable Borel equivalent solution is identical to uh, some Borel action of a countable group. So let's make this effective. So let's say that you have a countable group G, which is acting on the C set, right? So the group is transforming, sending any C set to another C set. This action is computable in the indices if you have a map, right, that describes this action, right, and behaves properly on the indices, right? So if you have distant indices for the same C set, you better should, should, uh, you better should send them to the same C set, right? So this is another way of effectivizing Feldman, saying let's consider the class 
of all right the equivalence relation induced by action of, of computable groups uh computable indices right okay we will call those uh c or the equivalent solutions now this other it is effectivizing losing novico right innumerable indices right remember by Lucy Novikov uh, if you have an equivalent solution which is uh, countable right you are sure that you have a count a uniform enumeration of Borel complexity of each class right so uh, to transfer that to our domain you may say that EC is enumerable in indices right again if you are able to enumerate each class right and again up to equality C right so if you have WE, you would like to enumerate all C set that are from this class, right? Perhaps, uh, of course, I mean, it's sufficient to enumerate just one instance from uh, each of these sets, right? Okay, so we have these two versions, right? That would correspond are two possible effectivizations of, uh, of the notion of countable Borel insulation. And then the natural question is, do they align or not, right? In the classic case, they do, right? So if you wish, you can regard that as the actual content of Feldman Moore, right? Whatever it is enumerable in the indices will be realized by uh, some Borel action of countable group. So, and then the question would be, is it the case that any equivalent solution which is enumerable in the indices turn out to be a C orbit equivalent solution, identical to a C orbit equivalent solution, turn out to be realizable by an action computable in indices? That would be nice, perhaps too nice, right? The answer is no. Okay, so you actually have that E zero C is enumerable in the in the in indices. If you think about that, you will get it, right? But but there is no group action that realizes that up to identity. Okay. Now there are multiple ways to see that, right? Let me give you one that uh, we have expanded greatly in our paper. Uh, so one way it is to using a certain lemma. So let's say that some equivalent solution, some C uh, orbit equivalent solutions are induced by some group is in fact permutation induced, right? If you can represent that through a permutation, if you can actually, rather than considering some abstract group, right? You can actually consider a subgroup of S infinity, right? So, and where the action, well, the action, it is exactly what you expect, right? If pi is a permutation of omega, then you actually have that the, this action, right? The action of pi on Wx, right? Will be just the Wy, right? Which emerging by acting uh, pi on any single L in Wx, right? Okay. So it's exactly a transformation of a set into another, C set into another through some uh, computable permutation on omega. Okay, so what we show with this is that every orbit relation of a group action, which is computable in the indices, must necessarily be permutation induced. Okay, so limiting yourself to uh, uh, to sub computable subgroups of S the infinity is not up to computable reducibility, right? You don't lose anything, right? So then from now on, I mean, let's let's agree that whenever is thinking about C orbit equivalent solution, right? What I'm really think of it is, are those generated by some group G, right? Which is a computable group of permutations on, on the natural numbers, right? And where the action it is, of course, I mean, this one, right? The most obvious action you can see about the permutation. Okay. Now, from this lemma, well, it follows immediately that you have no hope of realizing, uh, let's say, E0C, right? Because I mean, each of these actions are just a permutation, right? So for instance, I mean, all of them will be cardinality invariant. I mean, if you have a set with two elements, there is no hope to add permutation to transform it into one that has three elements, right? So easy as that. I mean, in E0, you actually identify all finite sets and there is something, this is something you cannot obtain through a permutation, right? Then the reaction it is saying, yeah, sure, but I mean, perhaps here you're acquiring too much. I mean, again, remember that computable reductions are sensible to uh, too many aspects. I mean, they have their quotient theorem there. They have the complexity operations involved, right? So why relax a little bit this notion of realizability and reason up to computable reducibility? So then the question would be the following, right? Is there some group such that uh, uh, this group would re an action of this group computable in indices would realize E0C up to computable reducibility, 
right? Can this be the case, right? Notice that since E0C is the sigma three universal, well, all the C orbit equivalent solution would reduce it to it. So what really matters here, the question is really whether uh, you are able to encode E0C into some group action, computable indices, right? So that's a natural question, right? Let me give you briefly, uh, let me show you briefly that, in fact, you can, right? So take the subgroup of S infinity, which is generated by all permutation with finite support, right? So you are, all of them that move only finitely many elements, right? Okay. So, and we are able to show that, in fact, I mean, these guys completely very reducible to E0C, right? And again, I mean, this argument by itself already, if you write down this argument, it's, it's, a, it's a priority construction and you have to deal with sigma three approximation. It, it takes some effort, right? But then of course, I mean, in a sense, uh, well, it's, it's reasonable, right? So this EP is the closest you may get to E0C by using only permutations, right? If you're allowed only to use permutations, which is an obvious constraint because we said that all of these C orbit equivalent solutions are permutation induced, right? So why so? Well, because two guys will be our indices for guys that are EP equivalent, if and only if you, yeah, here you cannot see that, right? I guess, yeah. If and only if they are eventually the same, right? So this is E0, right? From some point on, they are exactly the same set. And before that, they actually peak the same number of elements, right? Which is exactly a sort of variant of E0, but once you can work only with permutations, right? You don't want stupid cardinality issue to prevent you from transforming a C set prop to another. Okay. So, and then at this point, you may suspect, well, perhaps few orbit relations would be of the highest complexity. In order to encode E0 into a C orbit equivalent solution, you really need a fork, right? Or equivalently, in order to encode any sigma three equivalent solution, remember that E0 is sigma three universal, uh, into a group action computable indices, you really have to do something, right? You really have to perform a lot of encoding, right? But this turned out to not to be the case. And in fact, we obtain a dichotomy, which is neat. Um, I think quite unexpected, or at least it was unexpected to me, right? So for groups uh, G that are acting computably in indices, you have two options. So either G has finitely many actions, uh, and since now we're thinking G to be a group of permutation, you can even say either G is finite, right? Okay, either G is finite in which the case, its complexity will be exactly the same up to computable reducibility of equality C, right? Are of the least possible complexity, or they immediately jump to the highest possible complexity, right? As soon as you have infinitely many actions, then immediately this guy will be of the same complexity of E0C, right? And again, to some extent, this is surprising, right? I mean, one possible interpretation of this result, right? Which obviously I favor, right? <laughs> one possible interpretation is really that this is an example of a notion that turned out to provide a very, very rich theory. So you have basically no dichotomy whatsoever for countable Borel equivalent solution that when you translate to the computable setting, even though working with computable reducibility, you're supposed to obtain a lot of no reductions, right? You're supposed to obtain as many diagonalizations you want in many cases. Here you obtain something which is way more tame, right? Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, so a priori, the group in general, right, you may have that some elements, right, do perform exactly the same action, some group element, right? Okay, so which is why I mean we're using this terminology. But in fact, I mean, if the group is just a group of permutations, right, in fact, it's the same as saying uh, the group is finite. Thanks. You're not being finite generated, you're truly being finite. Right, right, exactly, exactly, exactly. So oh, basically, I mean, in the proof, what we have is this distinguishing cases, right? So basically, I mean, one case would be the case in which we have an orbit, which is infinite, right? And this is sufficient working into this orbit to do all the coding you'd like to have, right? And the other case that is you don't have uh, isolated actions, right? It's never the case that you can fix uh, finitely many elements such that uh, any permutation that won't move these finitely many elements then will be that end, right? 
as soon as you don't have this isolation property, then you immediately have that the corresponding orbit equivalent solution would be as complicated as possible. Right? So the moral to take here it is that there are cases in which you have some notion that turn out to be non-tame in the Borel setting, you export to the uh, computable setting and it is surprising. So then it follows, of course, that uh, this guy, the top element has many natural realization, right? So take any group which has infinite amount of actions. Okay. So, and then, uh, then one would say, okay, what about enumerability in indices? You remember I also mentioned that before, right? Another avenue to effectivize the notion of uh, countable Borel equivalent solution. Uh, so here the situation are uh, way less same, right? So in a sense, part of the complexity of the Borel theory, it is exported here, right? So you have E mean is enumerable in indices and for E max is the same, right? That's really an easy exercise if you think about that. So both of them are strictly below uh, equality C, but they cannot be equivalent. And so, right, for the result that we have, it cannot be equivalent to any C or B equivalent solution, right? So you have guys that are enumerable in indices, but are not, uh, right, realized by any uh, orbit of a group action computable in indices, right? And in fact, I mean, more than this, right? There is an infinite chain of equivalent solution which are all enumerable in indices and that are and leaves strictly in the between of equality C and E zero C. And in fact, in the between of these two guys that are the only degrees that are realized by group actions, you have also infinite outcomes. Okay. Okay, good. So this also means that there is no analog of uh, Glee metrics dichotomy and in a fairly dramatic way, right? I mean, uh, to let glimmer first dichotomy fail, there are multiple ways, right? You can build like very much artificial equivalent solution that would let it fail, right? Here, you're actually breaking glimmer first dichotomy, but also under the condition that equivalent solution are on the C sets, right? So you can think of those that uh, restriction of benchmark relations, right? Or at least relations on counter space to the C instances. And moreover, they are enumerable. Right, so you have these two additional constraints, and yet I mean you break completely agreed efforts. Okay, so how much time do we have? Considering that I started maybe two hours later. <laughs> okay, 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 great, great, great. Okay, okay, okay. So let's review extremely quickly ten minutes. Whatever I can say about this amorphous relation. Right? I think we got fifteen. Minutes. Okay, fifteen minutes. Okay, okay. Good, good. So uh, again, here we'd like to study how the theory of isomorphism relation would transfer to the computable setting, right? So let's very quickly review a few things from the Borel theory. So first of all, we, we, we were speaking about Borel actions of countable groups. What happens if, if you go to Borel actions of uncountable groups? And of course, I mean, here you have that many more orbit relations size, and possibly the most important example is given by isomorphism relations. Right. So, and here, just to give you a flavor, and I mean, most certainly this is something you already know, but whatever. So, uh, if you have any countable language, uh, right, you can then denote the collection of all models for this. Note that each of these elements, that model, can actually be regarded as an element of this product space over here, right? In fact, I mean, the atomic diagram can actually be regarded uh, by a single real, right? This is what we do all the time in computable structure here, right? Good. Now, uh, the logic action of S infinity on this space, the space of all the model for a given language, right, you fix, well, the logic action it is exactly the action which would correspond to isomorphism, right? Okay, so you have a certain model, you transform it into another up to a certain permutation of the elements, right? So the action by itself is continuous. The, resu the resulting orbit relation is just the isomorphism relation on the space of all the models, right, for language L. Now, of course, in many cases, we are not really interested in uh, this guy over here, right? I mean, it's too rich, right? <laughs> but in some nice some collection, right, of models, so up to some axiomatization. Uh, in the broad setting, you have a nice closure property so that if you have that some formula it is of an, an L omega one omega, then the collection of all models for that formula, right, then would be would would inherit the uh, a standard structure, right? 
But basically, you actually have the, the logic action on this, right? The model of all phi, which phi you can pick up an axiomatization of groups, graphs, whatever you wish, right? Will generate this guy, the isomorphism relation on that familiar class of algebra structures. Okay. So easy as that. The moral of all of this it is simply that you can use, uh, you're supposed to use the Borel technology to uh, assess the complexity of natural classes of countable structures. You would like to know if uh, torsion free abelian groups are less or more complicated than torsion abelian groups. Well, just use this. Okay. Okay. So people actually had a number of results in this direction, right? So say that a certain class K of countable structures, natural one, is on top for Borel reducibility. If you have that pro countable language you can define, right? You actually have that they all Borel reduces to the isomorphism relation on K, right? And it turned out that this is the case for many familiar classes, right? Turn out to be on top. Right. Undirected graphs, trees, linear orders, uh, uh, new potent groups, fields. I mean, this won't surprise you, right? I mean, these are very extremely rich classes of structures, right? And, and they all turn out to be on top for Borel reducibility, right? And it's still still ongoing, right? I mean, there has been this recent preprint still by Paulini and Shara. They show solving a long standing open problem that this is the case also for torsion free abelian groups. Okay. Now, yeah, here I'm complaining with Arby Friedman, uh, so let me skip to this slide. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good, good. I, I'm afraid he, he would know that if I say this. Okay, good. So uh, now how to export these to the computable setting? A few words about that. Uh, so computable reductions, uh, uh, well, we would like to use them to assess the complexity of the summer piece of problem between computable structures, right? And, and over there, the idea is, so first of all, uh, we, we would relax a little bit the notion of the computable reducibility, allowing, allowing for computable reduction that would behave nicely only on some subset of omega, where this subset contain the indices for the computable structure where it is, right? So here we have, if you think about that, I mean, uh, for, for a lot of familiar uh, classes of classes or structures, already obtaining an enumeration of these guys is a complicated issue, right? So once we move to the computable setting, we would have to take care of that if you really would like to have a reduction which is total on omega, right? So a way it is just to forget about the, all this issue and saying, okay, the reduction just needs to behave properly on, uh, on a subset which contains the relevant or similarly, you would like the input always to be correct. If it is not, it's correct. Okay, good. Ah, so then you can compare isomorphism relation on computable structures by considering partial computable reduction with domain containing the relevance. Okay. And you have a number of results in this direction, right? So some are similar to what they what they have in the breadth setting, right? Isomorphism relation on computable structures are for these classes, right, are sigma one one universal. This is the case for three and direct graphs and so forth, right? But also for torsion free abelian groups, right? And, and even for torsion abelian, right? So in this marked difference with the classic case, right? And also, also in fact, I mean, this turned out to be universal with respect to any hyper arithmetic relation. And this, this is this in general, this is not the case for the Borel setting, right? In Borel setting, there are some Borel equivalent solution, simple one, one example, it is E1, that are not reducible to any isomorphism, right? So you have difference between these two areas, right? Okay, and so maybe quickly, just a few words about that, what we did in this direction, right? Okay, now in order to gauge the complexity of this Borel isomorphism relation, already Friedman and Stanley introduced a really natural jump operator, right? If you have a relation, uh, an equivalent solution E on some space X, right? Its jump with, will be the relation on X omega, right? Which identify two uh, countably infinite sequences of elements from X, if and only if you pick elements from exactly the same E classes, right? Okay, so this, this will give you a jump, right? That's a result that I have it. If the uh, equivalent solution is non-trivial, it has more than one class, then it will be the jump, it's actually a jump okay. on the Borel case, right? One can have one can have a natural effectivization of those, right? A computable analog of the Friedman-Stalin jump, right? 
right? And this computable analog, again, I mean, it's by thinking of restriction of problem on the C sets, right? This is one really of the takeaway of this one, I hope so, right? <laughs> one way of going from the world set to the computable setting and it's thinking of restrictions of problem to the C sets, right? So here, what you have it, it is that if it is an equivalent solution on Omega, right? Then it's jump, right? Will identify two sequences, right? If and only if they pick elements from exactly the same E classes, right? Will identify two C sets if and only here, right? Play least elements from exactly the same E classes. Okay. Good. Now, the jump of the identity is a whole friend up to computable reducibility, is a quality C, right? And you can actually show that uh, uh, for hyperarithmetic equivalent solution, this is a jump, right? Okay. What we proved, right? Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> you can actually, well, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I will finish. Uh, you can actually uh, define, right? Not surprisingly, remember that the very reason for introducing a little longer. Ah, okay, 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 great, great. So I was not happy. Okay. <laughs> Remember that we introduced this notion of FS jump, right? In order to gauge the complexity of isomorphism variation, right? So we really want to, for some real equivalent solution, possibly nice, not or whatever, we really would like to have a measure of how complicated it is, right? If it turned out to be not on top, right? So for that, the natural way to do that it is the Friedman Stanley Tower, right? So basically, you start from the identity on counter space, right? And you iterate, the job, right? Transfinitely through the ordinals, right? And it turned out to be that this tower is co final for all Borelli isomorphism relation. So it will really give you a way of gauging the complexity of various Borelli isomorphism relations. Okay. So, how to do that in a computable setting? I mean, exactly the same, right? So, you, you would define a transfinite jump hierarchy, but along the computable ordinals, right? And this is exactly what you would imagine, right? Of course, you would re rely on some notations for ordinal, right? But then, I mean, if this is a notation for a su successor ordinal, then a jump would be just a successor jump, right? If it is for, for limit ordinal, well, it will be just the join, right? Whatever this is, the uniform join, a way of like basically, uh, yeah, joining all these guys, right? Okay, and it's exactly what you imagine. I mean, it's, it's precisely the, uh, the transferred jump hierarchy, but now along, along the computable ordinals, right? So what we proved, uh, a number of things, right? Here we'll mention only two of those. So uh, first of all, we proved that this uh, uh, tower, right? The computable analog of the friedman stanley tower turned out to be co-final for hyperarithmetic equivalence ratio in the computable setting, right? For any hyperarithmetic equivalent solution, you actually have a many jumps where a is some notation, a many jumps of the identity that bounds it. Okay, so you you also have here this uh, yardstick, right? Okay. Um, and let me close by saying that unfortunately, well, I don't know if unfortunately it's it's unavoidable. <laughs> so uh, this this notation of a jump is well, this jump is notation dependent. Right. Okay. So up to omega square, it is not the case, right? If you have AB, which are notation for ordinals, which are strictly below omega square, in fact, I mean, their ju jumping A times or jumping B times will be exactly the same up to computable reducibility. But from uh, omega square on, it isn't the case, right? We were able to build uh, uh, some no, two notations, A and B, for omega square, such that the uh, jumping A times in the identity, the jumping B times on the identity would be incomparable with respect to computer. Uh, I think this is all. So the, uh, the moral was uh, don't trust uh, like easy, easy morals, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so one uh, when approaching this field, right, that of computable reducibility, it would be tempting of uh, of thinking that uh, since you are going to uh, towards a notion that is way more sensible to the complexity, right, to a, a finer notion than the Borel one, you would expect that you would obtain a, a wider 
situation than just in for a case. Sometimes it is the case, sometimes it is not, right? So you have a number of results that mirror in some faithful way, some other in which the analogy breaks in the sense that you have a nice dichotomy and structure result for the broad setting, which would fail and quite poorly in the computable setting. Some other case in which you have a wide situation that have countable broad equivalent isolation, which turn out to be for one interpretation of this notion, way more tame in the computable setting, right? So you basically have all possible options here, right? Okay. Um, I, I don't know whether you see this, uh, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> so, so this is uh, an Italian uh, movie from the 70s, uh, uh, which is called uh, uh, Roma come Chicago, which will translate as R Roma like similar to Chicago, right? Uh, because it was a gangster movie, et cetera, and for some reason, I mean, the Italian director in the 70s believed that Chicago was extremely dangerous, and so they wanted to say Roma is similar to Chicago in this respect. But well, that's it. Any questions? So is there any, um, on the second point, is there any uh, model theory, things that are equivalent to those things? You know, take the sake of it, take, you know, make it three. Is there any structures that show up in those equivalent to three? A P plus A. Uh, you mean how, how distant can be these two notations? No, no. Take, take some A, like a mega plus three. Mm -hmm. And then you're looking at the equivalence relation E plus A. Okay. okay. And so on, on count of models. Right, right. Do you have anything that you describe in capital models that lies in that place? I don't think so. Do you yeah. have how, how about any other one? Okay, so I'm just looking for examples that might show up that you know not just described that way, but they're described in terms of capital structures. Yeah, no, no, good point. I mean, basically, we, we don't have anything about that. That was also, to some extent, I guess, the complaint of a referee, maybe. <laughs> it can be interpreted in this way. So, I have nothing to do with it. No, 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 no you, you're a suspect. <laughs> no, no, no. The, yeah, no. They do a good job of that. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, what they say, they say that, I mean, everything, all of this is nice, right, but you would like somehow really to witness uh, how, how would you use this tower in order to have a concrete example realized that you exist, and we don't have so far, and there are some kind of uh, torsion of the loose, maybe, maybe one, of some, of some, some right. Hmm? Okay. right, so maybe, maybe. Is, it, is, it, is there any reason? I mean, with um, with the difference hierarchy, it, it, if you if, if you make it behave it correctly, make sure everything is basically somewhere mm -hmm. omega two. Right, right. Is that similar here to what happens? So, uh, if it is similar to what you have in the hierarchy, to to some extent, right? I mean, the, the the reason is different. I would say. I mean, here actually to having like uh, yeah, no, 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 no. The, yeah, the reason is pretty much similar in fact. I mean, simply if, uh, below is where you have not enough room to actually perform or to do this. That's fairly similar to what we have in motion. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, no, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so. Yeah, so maybe this one. Uh -huh. so, yeah, yeah. Right. 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 Exactly. So then, I mean, of course, I mean, there, there are some downsides to this notion, right? I mean, if you think a little bit about that, but, but on the other hand, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty extensional, right? So you would expect that really, you, that it would be easy to obtain this analogy with the Borel setting if you are really uh, already, already in the definition of the action, right? Being computable indices, you would really play directly with indices, right? But here you are simply saying, okay, you have an action which is transforming a subset of the natural numbers into another subset of the natural numbers, right? I mean, simple as that. And then, of course, I mean, the computable theoretic request it is that you would like 
right, this to be faithfully represented by the indices. Right. Now, um, this is not literally a defect. What do you mean by a reduction? No, it's, it's not literally a defect. Okay. Uh, it is a group action, right? On the indices. I see. No, no, uh, uh, on element of C, right? So this is an action on, on just C, on, on subset of natural numbers. And, and, and so good, um, in C. No, no, wait, wait, wait. So the, the action, it is on sets of natural numbers. And, and that's it. I mean, there is no computability going on apart from the fact that I'm considering only sets that turn out to be C. But in fact, I mean, that, that's just an action on sets of numbers, right? And, and it must be an action induced by group. Now, you, some of some of this action can be represented in a computable way, and if they can, they, they are computable. Yeah, 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 yeah. precisely. Any more questions? Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. So the coffee is not here yet. It should arrive eventually. Um, anyway, we will start the next talk 10 minutes later than we scheduled, and the last talk will be five minutes later. Okay, and we'll just adjust. Okay. So hopefully the coffee will show up before the next talk starts. That's all we can hope for. Then we're going to run. Yep. If your coffee does the job for 10 minutes, then you could start and there's a long coffee break. I don't know, Stephen. You know, if everybody stays seated, never moves. Who's next? Anyway? Slides on there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.